us. I'm not just saying that because we're having a good time. But by Sholly said, it's kind of nice to come over and listen in and uh, see whatever it is that we're yapping about. But all right, I don't think these guys are ready to listen to us anymore. They're ready to play. Prague is uh, getting set to make his first move. Looks like we had English and English on the board there from our guest. Yeah, I was excited as an Englishman, but uh, <laughs> it looks like Prague has taken back that move. And moment of truth any moment now. Um, what approach do we think he'll go for? Will he take risks? Anna, you mentioned he might be ambitious. Will that be uh, the English? Will that be more mainstream? Kingsport openings. Okay, hands have been shaken. I'm very curious and I'm also very curious how much perhaps this opening choice would be potentially still a leftover preparation from the candidates that Hikaru referred to, all the players that competed just a month ago in Toronto and uh, still have so much preparation, so much uh, content in the bag that they decided. And I think sometimes players do do come to the board. Obviously, they come to the board with a ton of prep. You mentioned in some cases they come to the board with prep from a big event like the candidates. But I don't know if they always have their mind made up and, and maybe Prague was legitimately deciding uh, what to play there. But he does ultimately kick, uh, kick the E-pawn forward. He chooses best by test, according to Bobby Fischer. You've got E4 and C5 on the board. A Sicilian is ahead. What are the chances it's not a Sveshnikov? That's the question, David. <laughs> Maybe Bishop B5 just to prevent uh, the Sveshnikov. That has to be Magnus's main weapon these days, um, ever since 2018 in the World Championship. Um, yeah, it tends to be an Indian speciality. Danny, you mentioned that Prague waited. We saw during the candidates often uh, Vidit would meditate for two minutes as soon as the clock has started. Yeah, Prague often waiting 30 seconds, 40 seconds before making his first move. Um, okay, open Sicilian, uh, but not the Sveshnikov uh, between Prague and Carlsen. We'll wait to see which variation they go for there. Um, I'm, not, I'm not giving up on a transposition just yet, but yeah, yeah. it's possible. Okay, it's possible. Um, but all right, we do have an open Sicilian. I'm just spying the other boards. We have a Tarash over to G8. The king almost fell, but it's rook to G8. It does lose the rook, I believe, so I'm not sure what the trick is. David, you spot something? You cannot check. I thought it lost the rook as well, but if you check, the black king hides g7, h8, into the corner. Ah! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, clever. so it doesn't lose the rook yet. <laughs> it doesn't lose the rook yet. What about our other threat? Our other queen attempt was queen b3. Queen b3. Queen b3. And there's no rook takes g2. That was my first thought. Is, is there a sacrifice by the rook and some sort of renegade perpetual check by it Magnus, but I don't think so. Prague is about to play queen to b3. Yeah, and queen b3 has another idea as well. Um, if, for example, black blocks with d5, then you give the check. And if king g7, then you slide the white queen across to g3. Oh, um, nice. So there's actually... Very, multi. very pretty that the g frag will play the winning move, and he does. Queen to b3, threatening checkmate on f7, and there is no defense for the world number one. This is it. Game over. I think he might play one move more perhaps or not even what do you think david <laughs> d5 and then see what happens no, then resign d5 but now as we mentioned this check is decisive the black king cannot snake its way into the corner um if the black king tries to enter the g file there will be another check a second check from a new angle game over magnus is trying to keep his poker face normally we see more head shakes from magnus but i think he respects how much prag uh, how accurate prag has been today Yes, he definitely respects him a lot. And wow. takes H7. Prague takes the pawn on h7 instead of the check that we were expecting. No, but this is great. Threatens checkmate in oh, two. Oh, it's perhaps even with, stronger. With queen to b8 check. I, uh... There were multiple ways of winning. Multiple ways of winning. Magnus maybe plays queen d6, maybe resigns. Queen d6 is met by queen to b7, because then there will be no more rook sacrifices on G2, and there you and go, there Magnus Carlsen has resigned. Prague Nananda has beaten the world number one, the former world champion, but greatest player of all time, arguably, Prague Nananda. The future is bright, and uh, currently, the stars are shining here in Norway. The youngest player in the field gets it done, beats the tournament leader. They're discussing something about the variation, but either way, India is discussing whatever party they're gonna throw now. For Gugash's birthday, for Pragnanda's win over Magnus Carlsen, why Shali leading the women's event. There's so many reasons that they need to celebrate. Absolutely wild. 
Pradhananda and and his sister, by the way, getting it done here. Vaishali is leading the women's event, if you didn't know that. She was the first to get a victory in classical chess yesterday over Humpy Canero. Prague, not the first to get a victory here in classical. Fabiano beat Dingley Ren earlier in this round, but joins Fabi getting a three-point score on the board. That is what a victory in classical chess is worth. Magnus Carlsen's classical chess...